Hi, this is Amy Romeo from the jewelry making and craft blog, amyromeo.com. And on this channel, I like to share fun and easy jewelry making and craft projects. Today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make these customizable faux leather football earrings with faux leather heat transfer vinyl and a Cricut. I'll have the SVGs for this project for you free on my blog, and I'll show you exactly how to get those in just a moment. So if you're ready to learn how to make these fun football earrings, let's get started. To get the free SVGs for this football earrings project, you'll want to visit amyromeo.com slash design 207. And then you'll enter your first name here and your best email address, and you'll click get the freebie. Then you'll check your email and you have an email from me with a download button. Go ahead and download the SVGs, and then you'll want to unzip the download folder so you can access the SVG files inside and upload them to Cricut Design Space. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make these football faux leather earrings with a Cricut. So I'll be using my Cricut Maker, but you could also use the Maker 3, the Explore Air 2, the Explore 3, or even the Cricut Joy. That's because all of these machines come standard with the fine point blade, which is what I use to cut faux leather. Then I'll be using some faux leather and heat transfer vinyl for this project. There's two different designs. The first is a football, with some optional team color layers, and then also vinyl applied to add the football um, laces, and also an optional number. So I'll be showing you as we go the different materials I'm using, but know that the football is going to have brown faux leather as the base. You can use it on a roll or on a sheet or even this really fun glossy glitter. And then you'll have some optional team color layers of faux leather, and then some team color and white heat transfer vinyl. Again, I'll show you when we get to putting together the football earrings. The helmet earrings are a little different. They have a base at the bottom. I'm gonna use white, but you could also use a team color if you wanted to. And then on top of this base of faux leather, we're going to apply the helmet shape and then also the mouth guard part of the helmet. Those will cut from heat transfer vinyl. And again, that's a great time to use team colors. And then if you wanted to add an optional number, you can use do that from white or another team color. So again, I'll show you all that as we go. You can use regular heat transfer vinyl, glitter, foil iron-on, and this is a great time to use small pieces of vinyl like little scraps. So to apply the heat transfer vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using my Cricut Easy Press Mini on the low setting, which is just the first green bar, or you could use a regular Easy Press set to about 265 degrees. If you want to use a larger heat press for this project, you can, but you'll want to do some experimenting to get the pressure right so that you press the heat transfer vinyl firmly onto the faux leather, but you don't ruin the faux leather or flatten it. Some other tools we'll be using, some weeding tools. I have a regular hook tool, or I like the pin pen for weeding small areas of vinyl. I have some craft scissors, and then I also have a 1 16th inch hole punch, which is great for making the tiny earring hole in the faux leather if the Cricut doesn't cut it all the way through. Then I'll be using a little cover sheet. This is a piece of Teflon sheet that I've trimmed down to size, but you could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. And then you'll want a heat pressing pad to protect your surface. So for cutting the faux leather, I'll be using some blue painter's tape, which will help me get a nice cut on the faux leather. I'll use the purple strong grip cutting mat for cutting the faux leather, and then the green standard grip cutting mat when I cut vinyl. If you're using the Cricut Joy, which doesn't have a purple strong grip mat at the time I'm recording this video, then you'll just use the green mat for both. Then to attach the earring hooks, I'll be using two pair of flat nose jewelry making pliers and some regular earring hooks of your choice. And then I'll use some jump rings. I like the six millimeter size jump rings. So let's hop into Design Space now and we'll make each of these earrings one at a time. And while we do that, I'll talk you through some personalization options that you have, both with colors and then also with adding an optional player number. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload and then Upload Image and you'll browse to where the download folder is for this project. Inside that download folder, you'll need to unzip the folder so that you can access the three SVG files inside. One has the helmet and the football and then two have the player numbers. So once you have them unzipped, you're able to upload these files one at a time to Design Space. So I'm gonna start with the helmet and the football layer. I'll click Add to Canvas, 
And then I just want to talk you through some of the elements of this file. So first, you'll see you have your two earring shapes. One has pre-cut holes and one does not. And I always give you the two options because you might want to change the size of your earrings. And if you do, then that'll change the size of your earring hole. If you do want to change the size of your earrings and you need to create a new earring hole, then use this version and then check out a video that I'll link for you all about making your own earring holes in Design Space. If you're just making earrings, I recommend starting with the size that I've created for you and using this version with the pre-cut holes. And that's what we're gonna do in this video today. So the first thing that I want to do is ungroup all of these shapes so I can delete the version I'm not going to use and make my canvas a little cleaner. So let me just talk quickly about the helmet and the football earrings. Then what I will do is delete the helmet and I'll show you how to do the football start to finish, and then we'll return back and we'll do the helmets. Okay, so the football earrings here, these have four different layers. The brown is that brown faux leather layer that I talked to you about earlier. And then you have two optional additional faux leather layers that you can use for team colors. Let's say you only wanted to do one layer for team colors, then you can just hide or delete the third layer. It's really up to you but I'll cut them to show you how that works. Then the white layer here is gonna cut from vinyl and there's a top white piece, a bottom white piece, and then the lace. And normally in designs like this, I would group all of these white elements together so that they cut together and it makes them easy to weed and place on your football. But because I wanna give you the option of adding a player number or not, I want you to have the flexibility to move the little laces layer around depending on whether or not you have a player number and then how wide that player number is. So just know that we will group all of these white shapes together before we cut, but for now they're loose and they're flexible. The helmet is designed a little differently where the bottom layer, which is gray in this example, is faux leather. And then you're going to place the two other layers and the optional number layer, those will all be placed in vinyl on top of your little helmet. So we'll sh I'll show you those when we get to that, but for now I'm just going to delete them off the canvas and we'll just look at the footballs. So let me go ahead and enlarge this for you so we can get a little better look. Okay, so first things first, if you did not want to put a player number, I recommend dragging the little lace layer over a little bit so it's not so far off to the side of the design, okay? And then you can make them just like this with no player number. However, if you do wanna use a player number, let me go ahead and bring in those player numbers that we already uploaded to Design Space. And I'll just click on Upload again and I'll choose one of these sets of numbers and then add them to the canvas. So that brings in all of these numbers and I've given you zero through 50 on, on one SVG and then 51 through 99 on the other one and then double zero. And I had to break them up because it was a lot of numbers to bring into Design Space at one time. So let me delete these again. And then we'll do the same thing where we'll ungroup all of these layers. And what I wanna do is just show you some differences if we use the one, for example, and if we used a much wider number, let's use this one. Okay, and then we'll select all of the rest of these and delete them off the canvas. You can either delete them off the canvas by drawing a box around them and then clicking the delete button on your keyboard or you can delete them here in the layers panel. So these numbers are black, but they can be recolored so that you can either cut them from another team color or you can turn them white and then cut them with the laces and the other football elements. So let me just show you, if I drag this down here and I have the number one, you can use this little cursor down here at the bottom, see that little box, and you can make it bigger or smaller. Let me zoom in a little more. So see how if I have a one, this little lace layer looks a little too far off the edge. So I'll just drag it over a little bit. But if I wanted to use the number 42, which is a lot wider, 
then I'll need to use that little cursor and to just drag it in, make it smaller. And then I want the lace far over on the side there so that both of these fit. Do you see how that works? Okay, so let's get rid of the one and we'll use this 42. So I'll click on the 42 and I wanna make a copy of it. There we go, and I'll drag it down. Okay, and I wanna click on the 42s and I want to make sure they're both lined up. So I'll click align to the top. So now they're both in the same location on our little football earring here. So now that we have our number set to go, I think I'm gonna click on both the numbers and I'm going to make them white. You could leave them their own color if you wanted to. But now I have four white vinyl elements and what I wanna do is connect them together so they all cut together. So one way you can do this is by using your mouse and clicking on one of the white layers, holding the shift key and then clicking on all the other white layers one at a time. Or you can use over here in the layers panel, you can click on them one at a time as well. So I'm gonna hold shift and I'm going to click on, let's see, this one, that's not the right one. That one, that one, and that one, there we go. And right down here, I'm going to click on Unite. And that's going to connect them all together. See if I drag this over, now they're all here together and they're going to cut together. So I'm just gonna repeat that for this side. Perfect, okay. So now I'm ready to make our earrings. So I'll click the Make It button. And I'm cutting on a mat. So Design Space has separated our four layers onto four different mats. And the first thing I wanna do is drag my shapes away from the edges of the mat and away from each other just a little bit. And I want to click on Mirror for every single mat. And that's because faux leather and heat transfer vinyl cut in reverse. So usually I go through first, I click on each one and I mirror just so I don't forget. So I'll do that. Now I'll go back through and drag my little shapes apart from the edges. There we go. And that one's already set to go, perfect. So I'll click continue. And now I'm going to cut each of these layers according to the manufacturer's directions on the vinyl and I'll cut faux leather using the faux leather paper thin setting. So let me click here on the football, which is a faux leather layer. This is the setting that I use. Don't be worried about the word paper thin. It really doesn't matter. This is going to use the fine point blade, which is standard in your machine. So if you don't have this faux leather paper thin setting bookmarked as a favorite like I do, you can click on browse all materials to search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can search for this setting. So for this mat, this mat, and this mat, they're all faux leather layers. I'm going to be using this setting with more pressure. This is really important. And then for the white layer, I will be cutting this from regular heat transfer vinyl. I'll be using Caesar Easy Weed. So I'll click on the vinyl setting and I'll use default pressure. So let's hop over to my overhead camera. We'll get our mats cut out. We'll assemble the football earrings and then I'll show you quickly how to repeat this process with the helmets. It's very similar, so I'll run through that quickly for you so you can see how to create both of these different designs. So for the football earrings, I'll be cutting the three faux leather layers first. And as I mentioned, I've got a brown for the football, and then I'm gonna use these two colors, the black and the red for my team colors as the accent layers underneath. So I'm using, it's a glossy, uh, faux leather with glitter, but it's not it's not textured on the top. You may have seen faux leathers, it's called chunky glitter, where it's very raised and textured. You can cut that too. If you wanna use the chunky glitter, I recommend using it as one of the two accent layers and not the top layer, because you will be applying that heat transfer vinyl to the top and you need a smooth surface for that. So this uh, this really glossy, Glitter is so fun for getting a glitter look but not having to struggle with chunky glitter. If you do use chunky glitter, I'll leave a link to my video for you with all my tips and tricks for cutting it. You can absolutely do it. There's just a couple little things you'll want to keep in mind when you're cutting chunky glitter. 
but this will be my football and then I'll cut these two for my accent layers and then we'll cut that vinyl layer. If you're using regular brown, you can absolutely do the exact same thing that I'm going to do when I'm cutting these layers. So I've already trimmed a piece of the glossy faux leather to the size I saw in the matte preview screen where both of my football shapes will cut out completely. And I'm going to tape this down pretty side down on my purple strong grip cutting mat. And then I'll just use some of that blue painters tape that I showed you earlier and we'll tape this down on all sides. So my faux leather is all taped down and ready to go. And I already have the faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure set on the Cricut. So we'll just go ahead and load this into the Cricut and begin the cut. So once the cut is complete, before you've unloaded the mat, use a sharp weeding tool and just sort of lift up one of the edges of the cut and see if the cut went all the way through. And this one looks like it did, but I will just, let me see if I can show you that. See how I can lift it up cleanly and there's nothing pulling on the edges? So that worked well for this cut. I will just hit the cut button again to let it repeat. If you're on a Cricut Joy, you can repeat the cut by tapping the rerun button on your screen. But let's go ahead and repeat this cut one more time just to make sure that the cut went all the way through. Now I'll go ahead and unload the mat. And I'll remove my cut shapes. This is a very new sticky purple mat. So my shapes are sticking very well. So I wanted to point out that you can see where the Cricut attempted to cut the hole and then you can use your sharp weeding tool to poke it through and see if it goes all the way through. It did because this glossy glitter material cuts really nicely, but if it didn't, don't worry. That's when we can come in with the 1 16th inch hole punch and just punch that hole. And because the Cricut made a mark of where the hole is then you'll know exactly where to punch. So what I'm going to do is remove my other shape. This is also a good opportunity to trim up any little fuzzies that might be on the edges. So you can use some small scissors and just sort of trim. Sometimes the little part of the hole doesn't come all the way out, but it comes out most of the way. So then you can go ahead and use those little scissors to get in there and cut out the hole completely. Okay, so we have our two football shapes ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead now and cut out the layered shapes of the red and the black for the two layers that will go behind the footballs. I wanted to mention when you're making layered faux leather earrings like this, that you will probably want to put a back on the back of the earring because it makes your earrings look more finished and professional. But with layered earrings, you don't need to put a back on each of the layers, just put a back on the bottom layer. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video because I don't want it to get too long, but I will link to my video for you on four different ways to put a back on faux leather earrings. My preferred way is the second method that I show you in that video, which is to press heat transfer vinyl onto the back of the faux leather before cutting. So let me go ahead and cut out these two layers and then I'll cut out the vinyl layer. I'll get it weeded out and then I'll show you how to assemble the earrings. So my vinyl cut out, it's right up here. I'm just gonna cut right here so that I can save this part, this little scrap for later, and then I'll weed this out. And then we'll press our vinyl layer onto the faux leather football. So I've weeded out the little vinyl layer. Remember, if you use, if you use a different color for your number, then you'll have to cut that mat as well. But since I used all white and I grouped all of the layers together before cutting, they're all neatly placed together and I'll be able to press these easily onto my little football. So I have my Easy Press Mini all set to go on that first line, the low heat setting. And I just have my little Teflon cover sheet. And all I'm going to do is place my little football here on my pressing pad. And I'm going to just line up my vinyl layer There we go, that looks pretty cute. I'll cover with my Teflon sheet and press for about seven to 10 seconds. If you're using a regular Easy Press, you don't need to move it like I'm moving this little iron. You can just leave it in position for the same amount of time.
Now what you want to do is try and very carefully peel away the cover sheet of the vinyl layer. If, if while you're peeling the vinyl lifts up, just lay it right back down and press for a few more seconds. But that looks really good. And because this faux leather layer is warm now, it has a tendency to want to curl. So I'm just gonna pop it underneath my heat pressing pad so that it can cool off in a flat position while I press my other little football. There we go, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna let this one cool flat as well. While those two are cooling, I'm going to prepare my earring hooks. These are just regular shepherd earring hooks. And what I like to do is turn that bottom loop 90 degrees so that our earrings will hang straight. If you wanna see this process in a lot more detail, I'll link to a video for you talking all about how to turn the bottom loop of your earrings to make your earrings hang straight. But now that one is facing the right direction and I'll just go ahead and do that for the other earring hook. There we go. And now we're ready to attach our layers with jump rings and then attach the earring hooks. For the jump rings, I like to use a six millimeter jump ring, but you could go a little bigger if you wanted to. And I like to use two pair of flat nose pliers to open and close the jump rings. So I put the opening of the jump ring up at the 12 o'clock position, and then I like to have two pair of pliers at the three and the nine o'clock position. And I just twist the jump ring open. And I've already layered my three little football earring layers. So I'll just put the put them all in the jump ring while I'm still holding here with the pliers. Now I will attach my earring hook and I'll just close right back up. There we go. And then as I mentioned, this back layer is the one that you'll want to cover somehow, uh, preferably with heat transfer vinyl, just to make the back look more finished and professional. So now that both of the football earrings are done, I hope you've learned some different things, different tricks about how you can personalize these with the different layers of different colors, and then also how you can adjust the vinyl elements on that football layer to accommodate if you're using a larger number or a smaller number or no player number at all. So let's hop back into Design Space quickly. We're gonna get the helmets ready to cut out, and then I'll show you how to assemble and finish those. Okay, so we're back in Design Space and I wanna show you quickly how to set up the helmets to cut out. So again, we'll click on our helmet file and add to canvas. I'll click ungroup and I'll delete everything off the canvas except for the helmet SVGs that have the pre-cut hole. So again, we have three things going on here, a bottom faux leather layer and then two vinyl layers. And let's go grab a number so we can customize our earrings here. I'll click add to canvas. I'll ungroup. Just grab one number that I'm going to keep and then I will delete all of the others off the canvas. So now we're left just with the number in the helmets and I'll repeat what I did for the football. I'll just drag this up here and again, use that little cursor to change the shape. Now you could put the, put the number small up here if you wanted to, or because we're just layering vinyl on top of vinyl, you could make the number really big if you wanted to, and then just sort of have it layered on top of all of the layers of the helmet. It's up to you. I think I'll drag this a little bit smaller. There we go. And once we get one of these right, then we want to duplicate our number so that the second earring will have the exact same size number. I'll drag this over here. And again, I wanna click both those numbers and click on a line and align them at the top so they're both in the same place. Now you will be placing this layer separately, this number layer separately, so it'll be up to you to place it just by sight on the right location. But in the football earring, because we were connecting the number to the other parts of the football, it was important that we aligned all of those elements before we grouped them together and had them cut together. Okay, so in this example, I will be making the number its own color, and then we've got our two colors of vinyl and our faux leather layer. So let's go ahead and click the Make It button. Again, we're loading our materials on a mat. 
And again, we want to go through, click on mirror for each button. And again, we want to go through and toggle that mirror button on for each layer. So with the football earrings, we had three faux leather layers and one vinyl layer. And in this design, we have one faux leather layer, which is this bottom one, and then the three vinyl layers. So now that I have mirrored all of my mats, again, I wanna go through and just drag apart my shapes from the edges and from each other. There we go. I'll click back on the faux leather mat so I can cut that one first and I'll click continue. For the faux leather mat, again, I'll use the faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure. And then the vinyl mats, I will just use the setting that corresponds to the vinyl. So this one I'll cut from Caesar Easy Weed. The white layer, I'll use the vinyl setting. If you're using any glitter heat transfer vinyl, I recommend the glitter vinyl setting with default pressure. Foil iron on, same thing. Foil iron on setting with default pressure. So let's hop back over to the overhead camera. We'll get all of these vinyl layers cut out and then we'll assemble the helmet earrings. So for the helmet earring, I'm going to repeat the same steps. I'm gonna cut the one faux leather mat. I'm using white, so the white is pretty side down on my purple strong grip mat with blue painter's tape all around. And then I'm going to apply the three different layers of heat transfer vinyl. This white faux leather layer, this would be the layer that you would put a back on if you wanted to do that because this earring is only one layer of faux leather. So let's go ahead and cut out all of our layers and then we'll put together the earrings. So I've finished cutting out my faux leather layer and all of my vinyl layers. I've weeded them out from the excess vinyl and then I've also trimmed the two shapes apart so I can make each earring one at a time. So I'm gonna start with the little white faux leather base for the helmet and then the helmet vinyl layer. And I'm just gonna line them up one so that the little earring hole that's cut out of the vinyl is at the top and it lines up with the hole in the earring base in the faux leather. See how the hole goes all the way through? And also you want a nice even line of the white faux leather outline or whatever color you're using for your base. You want a nice even outline. That's how you'll know that your vinyl is placed correctly on your faux leather layer. And then we'll just repeat pressing, covering with a little Teflon sheet or butcher or parchment paper and press for about seven to 10 seconds. I'll carefully peel back and that looks good. So remember when I was showing you how to format this design in Design Space, I told you that you could make the number large if you wanted it to sort of overlap all of the parts of the earring, or you could make it small to only fit on the helmet. Well, I made this one large, so I'm gonna end up putting the number last as the last layer. This one, I'm gonna have to put this layer next, the sort of little mouth guard, so that when I put the number on top, it's going over both of those layers. This layer I cut from foil iron-on, which I love to use for that metallic shine, but it is a little finickier when you're trying to peel it off. So just remember, peel slowly, and if necessary, you can always press that top clear layer down and press again. Once I also am finished with pressing a layer, like when, when it's foil iron-on, I do like to cover one more time and press just to make sure that the entire layer is down. And now I'll just sort of line up my number here so it's on top of everything on the helmet and press. For this one, I'm using some glitter heat transfer vinyl, which is really pretty and has some nice sparkle. There we go, I think that came out really cute. So again, I'll place this one underneath my pressing pad so that it cools flat and I'll repeat layering and pressing the other earring. So now that I have both layers pressed, it's time to attach the earring hooks and we'll just do what we did before. I've already turned that little loop, the bottom loop on my earring hook so that my earrings will hang straight. So all I need to do is open up the jump rings and attach the little helmet earring to the earring hook.
And that's it. Our little personalized football faux leather earrings are complete. I hope you enjoyed this project and you're going to make some faux leather football earrings yourself. Remember to head over to amyromeo.com slash design 207 to get the SVG files for this project emailed to you instantly. If you're interested in selling earrings made from my design, I'll leave a link to my commercial license for this project down in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.